Well, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, elder abuse is a big problem in the United States. It's defined as an intentional act or failure to act that causes harm. So, is abuse and neglect happening in nursing homes and licensed assisted living facilities across Michiana? And if so, what is being done to combat the issue? Monica Murphy investigates. Nursing homes and assisted living facilities can be a wonderful experience for residents and their families. But for others, this isn't the case. Carla Fales is the president and CEO of Real Services in South Bend. The organization helps to meet the needs of older adults in St. Joe County. Fales says she believes staffing has an impact on resident outcomes. And I would say the staffing is one of the predominant things that drives the abuse neglect um, because of the fact they don't have enough. Um, they may not have adequate training um, and just the heavy load that they're carrying. Lynn Klo, who is the director of the state's long-term care ombudsman program, agrees. They're considering, you know, putting a minimum staffing standard in place for nursing homes. Under federal nursing home regulations, residents have the right to be free from abuse, neglect, and exploitation. According to the Family and Social Services Administration's Adult Protective Services Division, abuse includes touching another person in a rude manner. Neglect is defined as failure to provide adequate food, clothing, shelter, or medical care. And exploitation includes unauthorized uses of personal services or property. Clo adds, quote, neglect may or may not be intentional and says a certified nursing assistant who is poorly trained may not know how to provide proper care. Clo says some examples of neglect include incorrect body positioning, lack of toileting or changing of disposable briefs, which causes incontinence and can result in residents sitting in urine or feces. A lack of assistance with eating and drinking is another one, which can lead to malnutrition and dehydration. And lastly, ignoring call lights or cries for help. I dealt with the bad nursing homes. I'm sure there's plenty of good nursing homes out there. Mark Schroyer says his dad, Glenn Schroyer, moved into a local nursing home in 2022 and claims Glenn experienced several issues during his stay. He went into his room. He had feces. He had urine on him. My dad would ask to go to the bathroom. They wouldn't come. I had many times said, hey, my dad needs to go to the restroom. We'll be there in a little while. Patients just wandering. I mean, you saw it every day. Phil says abuse and neglect cases are not always so cut and dry. She says the examples Mark mentioned could be considered neglect if it's continual and if residents are exposed to unsafe conditions. Mark says that he never filed a formal complaint with any government agency because he didn't think about it at the time, but notified staff members. A month went by, and after having surgery in Chicago, Glenn was transferred to another nearby nursing home. Somebody will be there, they'll help him, they'll do his rehab, and it, it didn't turn out that way at all. There was nobody there for him. So that hurts. Mark says his dad experienced similar issues as before. For example, he says Glenn's clothes and teeth were missing, he was left in his feces, and his catheter bag would leak and he would be lying in urine. Mark says he notified staff members. If you're taking on the responsibility of having a, a one of our elderly come into your place of business and you're promising to take care of them, then you should be able to take care of them. If you don't have the staff to do it, then we need to find a, another way. Mark says this time he did file a formal complaint with the department's long-term care division. 16 News Now asked for a copy of that complaint, but Mark says he completed it online. When Mark received a copy of the health department's findings, he says it mentioned nothing about his dad. While the health department declined an on-camera or Zoom interview and declined to comment on specific cases, they said they received a total of 3,822 complaints in 2022, which included 941 allegations of abuse or neglect. Complaints are confidential under state and federal law. After investigating, a survey report is written, and then, if needed, facilities are required to submit a plan of correction. The department says it then follows up to make sure the correction has been implemented. They also do annual inspections and write report cards based on survey findings. 
Facility report cards were not updated for a period of time due to changes in the survey process during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, but have since resumed. While the health department is looking to see if regulations are being upheld, the ombudsman program takes a different approach. State um, uh, ombudsmen um, have a different perspective and we work for the residents and um, our job is to help resolve resident issues or complaints. And um, I think a good way to put this is that, you know, surveyors want to know if the call light system is working. Yep. Family um, and, and ombudsman want to know if somebody's going to be there to answer the call light when the resident pushes it. The program helps advocate for residents of long-term care facilities, which includes nursing facilities and licensed assisted living facilities. People that live in a nursing home are entitled to the same level of dignity that we are living in our own homes, and so they help ensure that they can advocate for them on that. Real Services hires ombudsmen. And so they are employed by Real Services. We have two of them, but they actually report in terms of their authority and their discretion directly to the state ombudsman, which every state has one. Mark says that he actually never knew about this program until our interview. Meanwhile, Glenn eventually passed away on October 22nd of last year. Though difficult, Glenn's memory carries on. Mark says Glenn was a family man, a pet lover, and a guy with an amazing spirit. Even at his sickest time, someone would walk in and he would try to make a joke to make them smile. It does. It makes me very sad, you know, because he didn't have to suffer like that. He really didn't. And so that's part of the advocacy that we're hoping to bring forward through the legislature and through others to say, you know, there needs to be standards within the industry. Um, it That better equips the nursing facilities to do what they're supposed to be doing. Monica Murphy, 16 News Now, investigates. And tomorrow we explore part two of potential abuse and neglect happening in nursing homes and licensed assisted living facilities across our region. Monica talks with a woman who claims she had a bad experience and is calling for change. Her emotional interview tomorrow on 16 News Now at 6. We'll be right back.